Monza got underway with McLaren on pole position and drama right at the first corner as cars had to scatter their way through the chicane. But in the bright sunshine, battles raged on. There was drama though as Bentley number seven got involved repeatedly with the Scuderia Villalba Corsa Ferrari and ended up bouncing over the kerb. Up front, the 98 McLaren though just looked dominant as Gregoire de Moustier, Alexandre Prema and Alvaro Parent stormed through into the race lead. And it was a lead they were never to lose. Ferrari and Bentley battles continued as the cars scrabbled their way out of the chicane. Lower down the order, the second McLaren was trying to gain places as well, but in the opening stint as Andy Merrick's tyres started to go off, he was losing places against the Pro Cup opposition, including the 99 McLaren with Andy Suchek on board. Phil Quaife came to grief down at the first chicane, and there was further drama as the number 99 McLaren with Andy Suchek, Kevin Astor and Kevin Koyas got caught up with the errant Ferrari heading into the second of the chicanes. Off the road went the Hasid and Katzberg BMW from Pro Am. It came back onto the road with a whole load of gravel scattered across the circuit as Vadim Kogai ran wide, coming out of the middle part of the Lesmo Benz. McLaren 98 with Prem at the wheel had an off. Kogai had another off, skated off into the gravel bed on the far side of the circuit and was nearly joined by the number four Audi. Number 50 with Simon Knapp at the wheel was going strongly. That car having good pace in the Pro-Am competition as the number one Audi battled its way into contention. But nobody at Monza could stop Gregoire de Moustier, Alexandre Prema and Alvaro Parent who brought home the winning McLaren. Pro-Am honours went the way of Comandini, Amos and Colombo with the gentleman trophy, Eret, Matchell and Schmickler. Silverstone then, a British crowd looking for a British victory. But could the new Bentley really deliver so soon in its career? Drama right from the word go as the Paul White Aston Martin skated off the road. Bentley 8 was in a bit of strife as it got bumped and barged out of the way by the HTP Mercedes coming through the loop. And then more dramas as the 43 BMW bounced off the side of it and both ran even wider. But the Bentley, undeterred, got back on track. Dramas for the 888 Ratcliffe driven BMW that bounced off the road and into the barriers. A lot of damage and a rather shaken driver. But on track, it was developing into a fight between the number 99 McLaren and the number seven Bentley. That then got a drive through and it looked as though the pendulum had swung back in favor of McLaren as the two ART Grand Prix cars dueled for the race lead. But people haven't bargained for the pace of a charging Stephen Kane who dragged the car into contention. Andy Merrick's middle stint in fairness as well was a very good one and that got the car ideally placed to challenge in that last stint and Andy Merrick dived through to grab the advantage as the cars worked their way into Brooklands. Off the road again went the white Aston, oh so nearly, coming to blows not us with the wall but also the parked Jaguar. Safety car came out and as the race got back underway it was all eyes on Bentley and this was the battle. Andy Merrick had got the car into contention, Stephen Kane had got the car into the lead as they came out of Woodcote and it looked as though the British car would win on home soil. It was a fantastic effort as the car rounded Cops Corner, the Bentley team absolutely elated. It was a different mood at ART as Alan Adam, the race director, waved the chequered flag as the race win went the way of Guy Smith, Andy Merrick and Stephen Kane. So a win for McLaren, a win for Bentley as the teams headed to Paul Ricard and McLaren in strife straight away with a punctured tyre. The Bentley ideally suited to the circuit, powered around the outside of the Santa Lock Audi to grab the race lead. The 84, the Donk, Primat, Schneider, Mercedes was busy squabbling as well with the traffic as it tried to work its way up the order. But it really was a duel between the Bentley, the McLaren and indeed Mercedes up front. It was a race on a Saturday evening that would go into the darkness. And so it wasn't just about strategy, it was also about using your more experienced long distance racer, perhaps more used to the night shift, to bring the car home. The Bentley hunted down the ART Grand Prix McLaren, dived up the inside and made the move stick. As the clock counted down, so darkness descended, the light faded, the perfect precursor to the Spa 24 hours that would be the next round of the championship as AF Corsa Ferrari and MP Motorsport Aston came to grief. Final round of pit stops. Would Bentley or McLaren go back on track ahead? It was the McLaren, but the Bentley powered through to snatch back the race advantage. And as Malcolm Wilson and Andy Merrick looked on, darkness descended and a fine sight the cars made as they pounded up towards the chequered flag. It was victory for the second race in a row for Guy Smith, Andy Merrick and Stephen Kane. 
then we went to Spa for the 24 hours, and what a race that turned out to be as well. It was crucial in setting up Laurence Vantour for the championship, and inevitably people had woes right from the start. Punctured tyres, but great battles raged on all the way through the field. Early problems for Nissan. Then off went the SMP Ferrari at the top of Radion. Cars scattered left and right. Carrie Moje had an off as well as the McLaren on cold tyres ended up in the barriers, and Carrie Moje lucky to walk away from a big wreck. Under the safety car, further fun and games as Jörg Muller for VDS clanged into the back of traffic. It did the BMW great damage and it really scuppered the chances for the team to win. Then Andrew Danilov had a spin, was hit by Andrew Howard and in the melee, cars just had nowhere to go. It was another huge impact, an awful lot of wreckage strewn around the circuit. Another safety car period followed. Then an accident that took out two Ferraris, a red flag, car stationary on the circuit. Some though taking the advantage to work in the garage but then have a drive-through penalty as the penalty for so doing. WRT took advantage of that, and as the race went into the night, it was shaping up to be a battle between the Mark VDS, Belgian run, BMW team, and Team WRT, the Belgian run, Audi squad. Both teams eager for victory on home ground. The battle went through the night, and in the early hours of the morning, the two teams were still hard at it as the Audi took the advantage. But as each car pitted, so the lead went the way of the other team. Lucas Law was conscious that they had a small problem, but then they had a godsend. Into the pit bunker for a disc and pad change went the Audi, and that enabled the BMW not only to get back into the lead, but also with a greater margin. But it was on a used set of tyres, and so the Audi attacked once again. Vantor with Marcus Winkelhock and Rene Rast came through to snatch the race lead and to take the race win. And with points awarded at 6, 12 and 24 hours, it was no wonder that Laurence Vantour was set nicely for the championship. And so the Nürburgring 1000 began behind a safety car in the rain and an early casualty on the first racing lap Jerome D'Ambrosio, so also Edward Sandstrom as his car was tagged into a spin by Alvaro Parent. Great battle for the lead early on as Christopher Meese squabbled with the McLaren of Kevin S. S made his move up on the inside as they worked their way around the first corner and eventually he got through into the lead as D'Ambrosio had a big lose and cost himself even more time. A rare mistake made by Maxi Buch as well as he slithered out wide and enabled his teammate to go through and snatch a position away. But Alex Buncombe was the real hero of the first couple of hours as he worked his way not only into the lead of Pro-Am, but into the lead of the race outright. Cesar Ramos had a bit of a drama heading down towards turn number one. He ran out wide and allowed Nico Verdonk to go through and snatch a position. Then off into the gravel went Rahel Fry. The Audi ended up against the tar barrier. And Bert Schneider, when he got on board 84 Mercedes, had a small slide as well. Not as bad as Harold Primat, who put the car in the gravel and cost them a chance of a result, however, as the battles continued up and down the field. But number one Audi was looking strong. 84 Mercedes with Schneider at the wheel was doing good lap times. But then when we had the Boots and Junior McLaren in the gravel and out came the safety car, it was decided to change drivers and Primat went off. As near namesake Premat went off as well, Alexandre Premat putting his car off the road. This was what brought out the safety car. This was the driver change that put Premat in for Schneider. In the background, Afanasiev took over. Castellacci, out of Pro-Am, lost the chance of winning the championship when he made contact with the Bentley and went off the road. And Hubert Haupt battled with Christopher Meese for the race lead. Meese eventually got ahead and that set nicely. Laurence Van Tour to take the title. Primat in the gravel put paid to any chance HTP had of winning the race for the 84 car. 80 ended up in the gravel bed as well. Big frustration for the Nissan team. As number 99, Kevin Est was the first to go onto slicks, but they didn't quite work soon enough, and he had this big spin. And getting onto the friction-free grass cost him a lot of time as he tried to recover. Off the road spectacularly, Claude Yves Gosselin into the wall at the first corner. A spin for Mark Poole's Aston Martin. But while all that was going on, Alexei Vasiliev also, as he tried to gain ground, had a drama coming out of the Schumacher S's and spun the Mercedes. And so, a race win for César Ramos, Christopher Meese and Laurence Van Tour. Pro Cup Championship honours as well for Laurence Van Tour in what has proved to be a fantastic season. Once again, the Blanc Pan Endurance Series has given some great racing. From David Addison for John Watson and Jack Nichols. We'll see you next year for more drama in 2015. Bye bye.